see one here. You don't like one. <laughs> Would you please give me a wonderful hand clap for Beth Beeman, our host this <laughs>
So when I came on in 2014, um, it was already um, uh, kind of in a light here. Sorry, I'm going to move a little bit. Um, we were already, the city was already in the process of looking at um, a strategic plan and what do we really need to do to preserve this, this theater, make it handicap accessible, make it safe for the actors and performers, make it actually comfortable to be in here year round, um, as well as having accessible restrooms, actually having access to the stage if you're in a wheelchair or a walker um, before you couldn't do that. Um, so safety and accessibility were really our the things that we focused on when we started planning um, the renovations and what we needed. So that took about a year to go through the strategic plan um, and looking at um, you know, size of the facility, what do we really want to do, how do we use it now, what's the use for the future, what are some of the immediate needs, um, what are some of the long-term plans we'd like to have. So based on that, the, the plan that we, basically this was the plan we came up with. Um, there were a few modifications through that process, um, but we worked with the Resendis Group out of Detroit. Um, they are uh, an architecture firm there that does, uh, has over 35 theater restorations and renovations um, under their belt. Um, the gentleman we worked with is Ed Francis. He's 87 years old. This was his last project. He also was the architect of record for the Brown Ball Center in Muskegon, as well as the Fox Theater in Detroit. So we were very, very lucky to have Ed here. Um, the, the multiple multiple color seats was his uh, his idea, and I just love it. Um, so Ed is great. Um, so between but Ed was actually the the Rosetta's group was the only um, non West Michigan uh, consultants or uh, that we worked with. Everybody else was from the furthest away. I think was uh, Zealand, Grand Rapids, and up towards Traverse City. Um, and everybody came from West Michigan. The majority of our consultants and um, contractors were all from West Michigan, most of them from Skeeton County. Um, that was one of our goals is to have, you know, we really wanted to keep the money in this community that was raised by the community um, and giving back. Because, and, and, and by doing that, I think what happened is that everybody wanted to have a little piece of it as far as I worked on that, and as they drive by, it's in their community. So there was a little bit more care and a little bit more leeway. We said, you know what, we need that change just a little bit, that they would gladly do it. Um, so we were very, very fortunate that way. Um, I mean, there's still things now, like there's a little paint here that needs to be done, and paint that has to be fixed in the back, and they're still coming back to do those things for us. So because they live in this community, they're not just, you know, they're not going back to Detroit or, or Chicago or Tennessee. Um, they're going to be in this community, and they know that I can find them. So, um, and speaking of the community, um, this project um, ultimately was a $3.8 million project. Um, because the city of Whitehall owns the theater, um, we are an enterprise fund within that and don't actually seek operating support. Um, my salary does not come from the city. Um, basically, I'm the only employee of the city. I'm the managing director here. And um, it is my responsibility to raise the funds for um, any kind of event we do, uh, to pay for the electricity, to pay for the heating and cooling, the telephone, uh, paying artists uh, for our summer theater festival, that money has to be raised. Um, so it's raised through grants, sponsorships, donations, and ticket sales. So please, when you see a show, come. It does help us a lot. Um, so that's kind of the, the where we are now. So this is what we call a ghost light. And we actually had a ghost light before we closed. And somehow in the restoration and the renovation, it got lost. Um, and I think one of the construction guys thought it was not something worth saving, and they tossed it. So this is a brand new ghost light that we have. Uh, it came at the end of the Summer Theater Festival. And uh, the ghost light is traditionally left on stage for a couple of different reasons. Um, the, the, the story is to keep the ghosts at bay, or at least to keep them company. Um, the ghosts in the theater. And yes, in the past, we have had what I would consider a friendly ghost. Um, and I haven't heard her much. We call her the Lavender Lady. Um, and I haven't seen her or heard her much. But we do actually, every once in a while, and I'm not kidding, this is actually for real, this sound, you hear it. And it's usually up in the side of the balcony. Don't know why. It's weird. Um, but the ghost light, uh, technically, it's actually just to make sure when you come in here in the dark that you don't pull off the stage. Because that's happening. So, but yeah, it's our ghost light. The Playhouse was meant to be a place, of, a community gathering place, a place for community people to be able to do shows, to play, to come and do music uh, for youth theater, arts education, things that I think we've done and we've done well. 
Um, one thing, I'm actually have a meeting next week um, with a few of our area actors, performers, producers that are interested in revamping and uh, rebuilding the White Lake Dramatic Club. Uh, yes, I know, it's very exciting. So we will have our own group of community players again. Um, the Summer Theater Festival um, is, um, there are actors that are, some are professional actors, equity actors, uh, part of the union. Some are just actors that have been doing it for a long time. Uh, most of them have a, a, a degree in theater. Um, uh, and that's what our Summer Theater Festival is. And all of those folks get paid. Everybody from working backstage to uh, people that work in the box office to all the actors, directors, everyone gets paid in the summertime. So this would be more of a community theater where it's more of a volunteer effort. Um, and so that is definitely something I want to do. And then beyond that, it's really kind of um, opening ourselves up to um, bigger name acts, things like that. Um, with Peter Yarrow coming in, I think that's really great. Um, we uh, partner, we're, I'm currently working on a new partnership um, with a gentleman who's interested in bringing other bigger name acts into the Playhouse, that he would be renting the facility, and then we would be able to enjoy those shows. Uh, we're also working with the Grand Rapids Ballet um, to have some traveling shows coming up here uh, at least a couple of times a year. The biggest challenge right now is because I am the only employee of the Playhouse, um, that I'm limited in how much I can do. Because that means I'm working all day and then I'm here all night or I'm here all weekend and I can only do that for so long. So, um, and somebody asked me, I said, it's about the, the popcorn bucket. I was like, oh yeah, I didn't get a chance to act. And she said, you gotta come in here too. So yes, right now I'm still cleaning here too. So yeah, and, and yes, there are people who help and people who volunteer, but it's also that extra step. It sounds like I'm whining, but it's also the extra step of we need to get all the volunteers together to do that. So it's just one more thing that has to be managed. So we're very, very fortunate to have this here. And, um, and that cleaning is a big part of it. Um, but yeah, definitely, I, I want to do that. Um, we're using it as rentals. We just had uh, Judy Stojak from Raymond James, and the Raymond James folks were here with about 100 people on Tuesday. They had their uh, client appreciation event. They watched a great movie. They had a bunch of food. Um, I've got a 50th birthday party here. Uh, somebody's renting the entire lobby. Uh, for that, um, there are a lot of uh, corporations and, and uh, businesses that are interested in doing their holiday parties here. Um, so that kind of thing, uh, wedding rentals and things as well, because it's, it's good income for us and it's a great use of the space. So. Yeah. Yes, dear? Are, are there seats in the balcony? There are. There are, and they're wonderful. Actually, and I'll tell you to give you my secret, the second row center in the balcony is my favorite place to sit. Um, you can see everything, the sound is great, and there's nobody in front of you. And there's seats, the seats in the center were seats that were never there before because the production, projection booth used to be there. So when you, if you are, are able and interested, you are welcome to go up and check out the, uh, the, the upstairs. Um, it is a wonderful place to sit. Yeah. Oh, and while you're up there, look up. And if you haven't looked up, look up. Um, this was one of our big discoveries um, during the renovation process. Um, this, it used to be that there was a black drop ceiling that was plastered in that. When it came down, it took off 25,000 pounds of weight off the ceiling. And then we realized there's this beautiful, beautiful ceiling up here. So um, we started looking at what our options were. Um, there's actually insulation is on the exterior, so there's not the straight on insulation, so we didn't disrupt this beautiful um, plank um, wood. There's not plywood because they didn't have it then. So each of those boards up there, you know, are part of the original roof. Um, and then you can see here to your left and to your right, um, these girder trusses, and this is one of the reasons that the construction took as long as it did, um, these girder trusses were bowed and twisted, um, and it's a result of, we don't exactly know what. Probably, hmm? Yeah, it could have been. Um, we think there may have been, it, that the roof shifted at some point. Um, there's some really interesting things about the construction in here, and you know, because it was built in five months, it was built primarily by volunteer labor, um, there's a whole lot of Jenga kind of stuff going on in here, up here. I mean, they would just kind of put wood in until they got it until they the right height. And so eventually that shifts. So as you can see on both of these sides, there is um, steel wrapped around both the, the north and south girder trusses. And those are what actually holds up the entire roof and holds the building together. So they were kind of important. Um, and so... It took about nine months of going back and forth with the architects, the engineer, and the builder to figure out exactly what we needed to do. 
So each one of these girder trusses, this is in two pieces, had to be lifted by chain. There was no crane coming in here. Lifted by chain and put in place. Each of the holes that pulled it together were drilled in place. It was a massive project. Um, but ultimately, what we've done is we've secured the, both of the girder trusses. Um, they added new concrete in the back, new footings underneath, because there were no footings. Um, new footings here on stage right and left. Um, those Inside those are basically a beam, a wooden beam. That was all that was holding up the roof. Um, and it was only partially on a wall downstairs. There was no footing. So the time was taken to do that. And the added expense of that was basically our contingency, which was $260,000 um, to shore up this roof and ceiling and to make sure that the building wasn't going to fall. Um, and the building itself, um, and when we go up on stage, I'm happy to show you the rear wall, um, is built of a material called speed block. And somebody recognized it as something that old silos were built out of years ago. It's like a four-chambered hollow, almost like a terracotta block. That's what this whole building is, built, is made of originally. And the challenge with that is that there was no rebar, there was no concrete, there was no cement inside. It's just these hollow blocks. So when they started looking at, you know, renovating this and adding weight or taking away weight, and especially with adding this much steel, there was a lot of concern with how much of that weight, um, you know, how do you calculate that? And I'm, I'm absolutely in awe of the folks that can do that work. Um, but it, I mean, I, and, and you know, structurally, it, it just is beautiful. I think when you look up there and can appreciate what they, what they actually put together. It's like a barn, basically, barn construction. This stage right dressing room, there was a wall in the corner behind the curb site, which is no longer there. But we pulled out that wall, and it's like they just covered it. They just took the drywall and covered up a closet, and there was still stuff in the closet. There was a chair from Blue Lake Fine Arts Camp. There were jelly shoes. Remember the old jelly shoes from the 80s? And there was this wallet. There was all this creepy, weird stuff. But this wallet had the guy's social security card, his driver's license, it had pay stuff, and my husband, who was doing the demo with me at the time, knew the guy. And so we found the guy's sister on Facebook, and we ended up mailing his wallet back to him. From, it was from 1980. So, who knew? Um, so lots of really cool stuff, lots of liquor bottles. People were some heavy drinkers. I don't know, I think, I'm guessing it was the builders because they were pre-prohibition liquor bottles, and they were found behind the site. Um, which is like the one was a plaster curved wall um, that uh, people thought it was for sound. It was never actually for sound. It was always for light projection uh, to give a sense of space, um, things like that. Uh, unfortunately, uh, due to its condition, um, we were unable to say that the restoration costs would have been prohibitive. Um, it, but, you know, we have a really cool model of it up here, too, that was presented to us at the, um, at the time of the open house by our architect team. Uh, they knew how much that uh, it meant to the community, so we have a cool little 3D model of that as well. Um, so if you guys, if you want to go on the tour, I welcome you to do that. Um, if you want to grab a donut and something to eat while we walk around, you're welcome to do that as well. Is that fine with you? As you know, the Playhouse was built in 1916, um, and uh, what we tr tried to achieve with the renovation was to preserve what was here and then expand it for safety and accessibility. So as you're looking at the front of the Playhouse, the, new, the facade that exists now is very similar to what it was back in 1916. During the renovation, um, we ended up taking off drywall uh, over the front, um, the front entrance here and uh, found actually two of the three transom windows that were original to the Playhouse as well as the fact that um, the, the doors, the black doors that we used to open and close for, sure, sh for, excuse me, for shows, inside that were the original doors to the playhouse. So those were taken and restored and now are back where they belong. Um, the paint color on the existing uh, playhouse is called Cocoa Whip um, and that was selected uh, by color analysis and paint analysis by our architect. And the Roycroft Red is um, a nod to the arts and crafts movement um, and was selected also by our architect. So if you go down this way, uh, down to your left, you're going to see um, uh, there's two theater seats 
and a, uh, a projector. The theater seats are original seats that were in the basement here at the Playhouse um, and have been mounted there for people to see. So those seats are from 1916. Um, the Playhouse originally sat 600 people, so people were a little bit smaller back in the day because we're about 365 now. Um, and then next to that is we have this uh, great uh, old projector that's from the 1930s. Um, this was original to the Playhouse and uh, was uh, gifted back to us from the Lewis House next door. It was in their basement. Uh, probably got there because uh, Blue Lake Fine Arts Camp actually owned the theater and the Lewis House at the time. And, uh, and gifted it back to us. So we have that here in our lobby. It is missing the lens and the light uh, source, but it is a really cool thing to have uh, back here at the Playhouse. Um, if you go down uh, the hallway uh, this way, this is our, our history wall. Um, it was a gift to, uh, made possible by a gift from the Consumers Energy Foundation. Um, along here was uh, select pieces of history about the Playhouse, um, stories of, uh, you know, the White Lake Dramatic Club, um, music, uh, plays, vaudeville, uh, Frank Adams and James Newfer, who were the, the energy behind the Playhouse um, to have it built back in 1916. Uh, there's a display cabinet uh, in the left of the hallway here, and this is a lot of our found objects that we found during construction under the floors, behind walls, um, uh, lots of really cool things, um, Coke bottles, whiskey bottles, pre-prohibition, Those lots of those were found on stage behind the, uh, the cyclorama, the wall. I uh, figured those got there by the construction guys. Um, our favorite, my favorite thing in there is the, um, there's a bottle of lemon extract and there, we actually found two of those under the floor in the balcony. Um, and when couldn't figure out why they were there, but if you look at the label, they were 89% alcohol. So figured that they were just doing a little drinking up there in the, in the, uh, in the back in the day. Um, found a couple of wallets. One was empty, one was full. Uh, ended up finding the owner of the full one and sent it back to him. Um, it was probably from the 1980s. Um, but there's lots of cool stuff in this cabinet. Um, there are two center pieces, uh, uh, center framed uh, pieces in the uh, hallway as well. And those are sections of wall that we found in the stage upstage left dressing room. Um, when they were tearing down the drywall, the construction workers noticed that there was signatures on the wall. So we took care on the left hand side tore off the drywall and then preserve these uh, for people to see. They're signatures from the 1920s. Um, there's all kinds of neat um, information on here. You know, kids are, were doing it back in the 20s and they're still doing it now where they sign their wall. So I, you know, sign the ceiling in the basement. Um, those are there now. So if you are, uh, if you go towards the, the box office and uh, concessions, our Stage Right Cafe, uh, you'll see that there are uh, wooden boards in front of the playhouse, in, excuse me, in front of the counters there. And these are uh, salvaged and reclaimed wood that was from our ceiling, our uh, wooden ceiling in the playhouse. These were supports for the drop ceiling, the plaster and lath drop ceiling. So we took those down, uh, sanded them, and they were, um, they're used to uh, protect the wall in front of there and just use because it's kind of cool to see that old wood being reused again. So here we are back in the green room, uh, our green room and rehearsal space uh, at the Playhouse. This is part of the new addition and it is something that we never had before at the, uh, at the old theater. Um, so this footprint of the room is similar in size to the acting space on the stage itself. And so we're really fortunate to be able to have this uh, for our summer theater festival. Uh, White Lake Youth Theater, uh, excuse me, White Lake Youth Theater is actually using the space right now. Uh, for rehearsals um, and so it, it can be used um, as a staging area for youth theater shows for other holiday you know other shows uh, we just had a concert here and this was a, a place where we had food and beverage and things like that for the performers um, it's a space that can be rented out um, and used um, because there are mirrors here it can be used for dance um, possibility of using for yoga and things like that so uh, it's a fantastic space it has a small kitchen here uh, that can be used for a variety of, of purposes. Um, so here we are in dressing room B. Uh, there's a, another one next to it, uh, dressing room A. Uh, these are two, we have two 20 station dressing rooms um, that are fully outfitted for uh, hair and makeup and costume storage. 
uh, and much better than what we used to have. It was a, an amazing uh, transformation. Folks that are coming in here uh, that had been actors and performers here in the past came into this space and uh, were absolutely amazed. Um, you know, we can do large shows, we can do musicals, we can actually do dance shows because we do have the space now to accommodate um, you know, that many performers, actors, and musicians. Uh, heating and cooling, we have five units on our roof, um, all brand new, all high efficiency, and our, actually our, our, our AC bill was lower than it used to be <laughs> for yeah. the summer. Mm -hmm. um, so really we're actually in pretty good shape. Uh, so now we can actually open year round because we used to have it closed in January and February because it was too cold. <laughs> um, people would bring blankets. Oh, oh, really oh, sad oh, and, oh, and sometimes the boiler just didn't work. But now we have a brand new HVAC that is just absolutely phenomenal. So yeah. it was nice and cool in here all day long. So mm -hmm. our actors appreciate it especially. Mm -hmm. So somebody will just touch that door when you come back in. Okay. The interior of the playhouse has all been uh, renovated and um, new seats, new carpeting. Uh, we have a new balcony. Uh, it actually looks the same for if you're, you, you're not familiar with what we've done, uh, but we did remove the projection booth that used to be up there in the balcony. Um, and uh, now we actually have beautiful seating, uh, three rows of seating right across the front uh, of the balcony in the center. We actually had to, uh, uh, do demo and demo, demo the whole balcony and that has all been rebuilt. So uh, the floors up there are even and stable. Uh, the platforms and the steps are, you know, to code, so it makes it much easier to get up and down from the balcony. Uh, all new stairs were built, um, but the house uh, originally sat 600, as I said before, and now uh, originally when the playhouse was built in 1916, and we're now at 367. So a significant difference, but um, the nice thing is that we have much more uh, front to back room, so there's much more leg room, and the seats are a little bit bigger and more comfortable. Um, the stage itself, um, uh, has been expanded and extended uh, seven feet. So we have a nice curved apron along the front and um, the original stage floor is actually still under here but we have a material called masonite uh, covering the stage which is much more even. It's better for uh, movement um, and you know with an, a layer of uh, Marley you know you could certainly do dance shows and things like that here as well. Uh, we have all new lighting, rigging, curtains, um, sound, electrical, um, and uh, it's, a, it's a great space uh, to perform in uh, for actors, singers. Um, acoustically, um, we've been working with our sound engineers and sound system um, to you know, balance to the new space and uh, had a great concert here on Saturday night with Peter Yarrow uh, that was super successful and um, had amazing sound. Uh, in fact, he loved the space. So this is our new theater. So uh, thank you so much for joining us for the tour today. Um, it's been wonderful having you all here and uh, would like to welcome you back to the Playhouse anytime. You can get information on our website at theplayhouseatwhitelake.org. You find and follow us on Facebook. Uh, lots of good information there and we hope to see you at a show real soon. You know, in addition to plays at the theater, there's always been a lot of other things like youth theater, um, they've done graduations here, there's music, uh, which has always been a big part of the Playhouse. Um, in fact, here we have, uh, you know, a concert with, uh, it was the Hayden Toy Symphony um, back, I think it was probably back in 1960-something, and uh, maybe 60, early 70s, and Edna Bloomdahl, uh, that owns the house behind us here, uh, is pictured in this newspaper article. Um, White Lake Youth Theater, which started in 1973, has a long history that's still uh, going today. Um, lots of really cool newspaper articles and photographs here of you know kids from a long time ago and kids not so long ago. Um, Miss America, 1961, Miss Nancy Ann Fleming uh, won the Miss White Lake uh, pageant here at the Playhouse um, in, 1960, in 1960 and then went on to become Miss America in 1961. Um, Blue Lake Fine Arts Camp owned the theater for uh, 45 years and, um, and uh, produce shows here in the summertime and uh, a lot of uh, the, during that time is when the high schools used it before their auditoriums were built. Um, community theater has always been a big part of the Playhouse. Um, there are lots of different names that it went under and actually we're working to rejuvenate and rebuild the White Lake Dramatic Club. And um, finally, and uh, at this point in time, the city of Whitehall currently owns the theater. 
um, since, 19, uh, since 2006, and we do a summer theater festival, lots of music, uh, community events. Um, we're doing wedding, you know, things like weddings, birthday parties, um, you know, club uh, galas and things like that. So Playhouse is a busy place. This is the projector behind Ellie, and Ellie can be Miss Carol Merrill, if she'd like. Oh, very nice. Oh, very nice. Very nice, Ellie. And then those are a couple of the original seats that have been in the basement here at the Playhouse. So, yay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs>